this is one of the important topic for derivation type questions from rheotics refraction through prism the first and foremost important part is a labeled ray diagram of light ray passing through the prism so this is the section of the of prism this one light ray incident on the first phase it is expected to go straight if no refraction since the light is moving from uh, air to glass rarer medium to denser medium it cannot go straight it will bend towards the normal as the light is moving from rarer to denser medium so the part of light ray after the prism is only expected if no refraction shown as dotted line really the light ray bent towards normal so this is a normal so light ray instead of going straight along the expected path it bent towards the normal So this light ray again trying to escape from glass to air, denser to air. So it again bent denser to air away from the normal. So this is the normal for the second phase AC. So instead of going straight, it bent away from the normal towards the base. Uh, if we extend the final emergent light ray to meet with the incident light ray, we can find the angle of deviation. It is the angle made by the emergent light ray from the incident light. Ray. This is the incident light ray projected. What angle the final light ray makes with the incident light ray extended? That angle is called angle of deviation. Choose the path of the light ray. PQ is the incident light ray. QR is a refracted and RS is the emergent light ray. M is the point of intersection of the normals. N is the point where you measure the angle of deviation. Now the angles. I is the angle of incidence at first phase AB. R1 represent the angle of incidence, sorry, angle of diffraction at first phase AB. R2 represent the angle of incidence at phase AC. E represent the angle of emergence. So, R2 is the angle of uh, incidence on phase AC. E represent the angle of emergence. ABC is the principal section of the prism. A is the refracting angle. BC is the base of the prism. AB and AC are the refracting face of the prism. Now I, R1, R2, value C to mark. I is the angle of incidence. R1, refraction. R2 is the angle of incidence. C is the emergence. Now if you check for derivation purpose, the quadrilateral AQMR for a quadrilateral sum of all the four angles must be 360 degree. So A plus AQM plus M plus ARN should be 360. Out of that AQM and ARM both are 90 degree. So 90 plus 90 180. We'll go other side 180. 360 minus 180 will be again 180. So A plus M should be finally equal to 180 degree. Now, if you take the base triangle of the quadrilateral QMR, R1 plus R2 plus M, total should be again 180 degree. Comparing 1 and 2, right hand side is 180, left hand side is a common M, so the rest should be equal. A should be, A should be equal to R1 plus R2. This is one of important results for the numerical questions for the prism. Now, if you take the 
triangle just above uh, the base triangle Q and R. Uh, if you extend the normal and the incident light is straight, the vertically opposed angle is supposed to be I. N, Q, M should be same as I. Out of that, this angle mark R, Q, M is R1. So the rest of the angle should be I minus R. N, Q, R is I minus R1. Uh, same way, if this is E, extending the uh, emergent light ray back, normal backward, the total angle is supposed to be vertically opposite equal to E. Out of that, this angle M, R, Q is R2. So the rest N, R, Q should be E minus R. So this is a property exterior angle of the triangle is equal to sum of the opposite interior angles. So D should be equal to I minus R1 plus E minus R2. Uh, if you group the positive and negative terms together, I plus E together minus of R1 plus R2. So I plus E minus R1 plus R2. R1 plus R2 is already A. So finally becomes I plus E minus A, another important result for numerical questions. If you check that relation, the angle of deviation definitely depends upon the angle of the prism. It depends upon the angle of incidence. Uh, the angle of emergence indirectly depends upon the refractive index of the material. Uh, that even depends upon the color of the light. So if you have a given prism, the material is constant, the angle is constant. Uh, if you make one single color of light incident, so in that particular case, A is constant. So the variation of D will be only with I. So the variation of D and I is plotted experimentally and the graph is obtained uh, like this. You observe this, each single value of deviation, there are two values of angle of incidence. In this mathematical formula also, for same value of D with same prism, you can have I value interchanged with E and E value interchanged with I. So two values of I, for example, if I is 35 and E is 50, you can get the same deviation when I is 50 and E is 35. That means same deviation is possible with two angle of incidences. That angle of incidences are the angle of incidence and angle of emergence in any one of the case. For any one particular deviation, this one angle of incidence, this one angle of emergence, the same deviation you can get when E and I are interchanged. So for this particular deviation, this will be one angle of incidence. This will be the second angle of incidence, which will be the angle of emergence. Now, if you check another deviation here, for an increased angle of incident, that means I increases, D will decrease. For that, we can see the angle of emergence also will decrease. For a low deviation value, both I and E values are less. I is increasing, E will decrease. Like it will continue at one particular point, the angle of incidence will be equal to the angle of emergence. So as it continues for one particular uh, deviation, the angle of incidence and angle of emergence are equal. That's a minimum deviation. So the angle of minimum deviation is defined as that particular value of deviation for which the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of emergence. If angle of incidence is equal to angle of emergence, the angle of R1 Angle R1 is supposed to be equal to angle R2. I equal to E demand R1 is equal to R2. If that point is not clear, we'll give an explanation at the end of the topic. Why? If I equal to E, why R1 should be equal to R2? We'll continue with that. At minimum deviation, uh, small d will be becoming uh, capital D. So I and D will be equal. Uh, 
R1, R2 supposed to be equal. If you apply these results together in uh, equation number 3, R1 equal to R2 should be 2R1 or 2R2. You can transfer to other side, you get R1 is equal to K by 2. Now, the same result if you apply in 4, small d becomes capital D, minimum deviation. I and D both are I, so 2I, 2I minus A. From that, A will go left, A plus D, 2I, so by 2. A plus D by 2 will be I. We apply these two results in Snell's law, sin I by sin R1 is equal to N2 by N1. So, I will be A plus D by 2, R will be R1, that's A by 2. So, sin A plus D by 2 instead of I and A by 2 instead of R. That's the expression for the refractive index. These are the two important results along with the final result. Now, the refractive indices of the medium and the prism. N1 is the refractive index of the medium. N2 is the refractive index of the material of the prism. So, just a different color to show the difference between two media. Even the prism after refraction is, the medium after refra uh, refraction from prism is N1. So, that's the final result. Now, just to understand why if an I is equal to E, R1 should be equal to R2. If you apply Snell's law at AB, this is just for understanding. You don't want to add in the derivation part. At AB, applying Snell's law, sin I by sin R1 is equal to refractive index of second medium by first medium. Now, same way if you apply for AC, sin angle of incidence is R2 here. So, sin R2. Angle of refraction is E here. Sin E equal to second medium is N1. First medium is N2. If you reciprocate this, it will be giving you sin E by sin R2 is equal to N2 by N1. If you check this right hand side for both cases, both are equal. So that means the left hand side has to be again equal. So you get sin i by sin r1 equal to sin e by sin r2. Now uh, we have discussed one case here i equal to e at minimum deviation. If i is equal to e, sin i is equal to sin e automatically then what sin r1 has to be equal to sin r2 then r1 has to be equal to r2 so that is the explanation for why i equal to e r1 should be equal to r2 that part is not needed for the derivation that we just to understand right it's perfect.